Welcome, this is Jennifer McGuire. I started today's video with the intention of sharing how to create dye impression backgrounds. But in doing so, I got carried away and ended up making a bunch of cards and have more tips to share with you on other subjects too, including stamp layering, and also how to use some other new products from Hero Arts. So there's a lot of information stuffed into this video. I apologize if it's long and kind of random, but I really wanted to show you all of these things. The one thing all of these projects have in common is the impressed background that I created with dyes. So I wanna go ahead and start by showing you how I did that. For this technique, you need a set of stacking dies where there's multiple dies in the same shape but different sizes. I'm using this new die set from Hero Arts. They call these infinity dies because there are so many included in the set and the price is really good. So in this circle set, there are 18 dies. The largest is four and a half inches. Then they get smaller by an eighth of an inch each time. And then the smallest one I actually don't have here. My daughter was playing with it, but it gets super small. So this is a great investment because you can cut so many different sizes with the one set. Now what I'm going to do today is tape several of them together. So I have a piece of magnet paper down to hold it as I do this and I am arranging them with the die cutting side down. So this is the back of the die that I'm actually putting tape on. So I'm going to tape them together so that I can work with them as if they were one die. Makes a huge difference for this technique. So now it's time to do the impression technique. Now this is also called embossing sometimes, but I think an impression is really better descriptor. We're going to press that die into our paper and leave a really cool pattern behind. To do this, you need any die cut machine and you're going to use your die cut machine how you normally would use an embossing folder. So for the big shot, that means I flip open the tab, so I'm on tab one, and then I put down a cutting plate. Then I need a special tool here. This is a tool that I think every crafter should have, and this is a uh, embossing pad. So this one is from Spellbinders. It's got a little thickness to it. If you don't have this, you can try this technique by using a piece of felt there or a couple pieces of craft foam. So you can experiment with that if you want to, but this pad is inexpensive and it is such a useful tool. So I have a piece of cardstock here. I'm just going to take my dies that I've taped together with the cutting side down onto the paper and put that on top and then put your other cutting plate on top. What's going to happen is those dies are going to press into the paper thanks to that pad that we have under there instead of cutting your paper and check out the cool results. I love this technique. It really makes a big impact in real life. It's kind of hard to see in the video and even the back looks really cool. You can do this technique with any single die, but using stacking dies like this makes a really big impression on a background. Now here's another thing you can do. I've laid my dies with the cutting side up and I'm just gently tapping some dark brown ink onto the die cutting edges. So it's just gonna be a little bit of ink on that die cutting edge. I'm gonna take my paper, I'm gonna very carefully lay my die down onto the paper, that ink side is going down. Be careful not to let it shift. We don't wanna move the ink around and then run it through. And what this does is puts a little bit of ink into the impressed area. So it helps to kind of define where those lines are, where the impression is. So this is dark brown on brown cardstock, so it's gonna be very subtle. But look at the difference. You can see more of the pattern that way. So I have a few examples doing it with and without ink um, that I'm creating today. It's really fun to do this. And again, you can do this with any die. It just looks really cool with stacked dies. Now these infinity dies from Hero Arts, they are available in circles and rectangles. And then they also have a tag set, which I'll show you later on. Here I have taped some of the rectangle dies together in the same way. And I wanted to show you what it looks like with this pressed into the background. Now, stacking dies are very popular. There are many on the market. What I like about these Hero Arts ones is that there are so many included in a set and the price point is about the same as what others have. So this is a good investment if you've been thinking about getting stacking dies. I really would encourage you to check out the Hero Arts ones because you get more bang for your buck. And check out the fun techniques you can do with them. Okay, I wanted to show you one more example. This one, I am putting some uh, like teal colored ink onto the cutting edge of these, dot, of these rectangle dies. Then I'm going to lay it down carefully onto white cardstock and run it through. Again, this is going to put some of that ink into the impressed areas and really give a fun look. It's just another variation of using this technique. 
Okay, so now that I've shown you how to create these impressed backgrounds, I wanted to show you some ways to use them on cards. So we need to get all the pieces ready that we're gonna put on these backgrounds. I'm gonna do some stamp layering first and share some tips with you along the way. This is the Hero Arts Cardinal stamp set. This is a wonderful stamp layering set. Now, many times people have said to me that they have trouble lining up each of the layers so that they're perfectly positioned. And here is a tip to help you with this. I really like to use the Misty stamping tool. It is so helpful with stamp layering. I know not everybody has this tool. You could use a stamp positioner instead. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and stamp four of these birds. I'm only planning to use three in the long run. I'm stamping an extra, but I'm gonna do four birds with the lightest color. This is Pale Tomato from Hero Arts, and I'm using the most solid image. Now, when it comes to the second one, I'm gonna go ahead and lay that second layer down on top of the first. And I'm going to lay it down and kind of look from all angles, excuse my head, but look from all angles and see that from the outside edge that I'm lining it up okay. This makes a big difference if you want your layering to be perfect. And since I have one extra, I can test it and make sure I'm happy with that layering on that one extra. And if I'm happy, I can go ahead and stamp the others. You'll see in a moment that I wasn't happy with one, so having that extra was helpful. So I'm stamping this layer with uh, Distress Ink in the Festive Berries color. You can mix your inks for stamp layering. That's completely fine. Now, if you don't have a stamping tool to help you with this, it really doesn't have to be lined up perfect every time. I promise you. I think... A lot of these stamp layering sets have a lot of forgiveness. It doesn't have to be perfect. So keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be perfect. Mine are not always perfect, and it always works. Okay, now here, I stamped that. I tried lining up, and I didn't do a good job. So this one's my practice one here. I'm going to redo it, reposition it, stamp it again, see if I got it lined up better. Turns out I did, so now I can go stamp my other three. So by stamping one extra, you can save a lot of time, and you can get better results. But remember, companies design stamp layering sets so that they don't have to be perfectly lined up. And I usually don't care, but I know many people want to get it just right. So I thought I'd share these tips today. Personally, I go by the motto of this is handmade, not Hallmark. So I never really strive to get my card looking absolutely perfect. I think it's part of the handmade nature. Here you can see I was struggling to get this little area around the beak just perfect. So having that one practice image to get it lined up just right was really helpful. So after I got all of my stamping done, I'm gonna go ahead and die cut these with the coordinating dies that are available. I like that Hero Arts cut very close to the edge and you can really see through them nicely to make sure they cut nicely. Now I decided I wanted to add a little bit of colored shimmer to this. And here's another way that practice image is very helpful. I could test out my colored shimmer and make sure that the color worked well on it without having to test it out on one of my final images. So this is a Spectrum Noir shimmer pen. It comes in clear also, which I also use, but I wanted to add some more dimension to it with a color. And it really makes quite a big difference in real life, adds that little bit of shimmer. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention the other colors I used on this. For the last layer of the bird, I used Hero Arts Red Royal. And for the beak and legs, I used uh, Charcoal Ink from Hero Arts. Next, I wanted to show you quickly the stamp layering with this deer, because this deer is absolutely beautiful. I love it. This is also from Hero Arts, and there are many wonderful layering images on this. So I'm going to do the same technique where I stamp an extra one, and that extra one is where I practice getting my images lined up, and then I do the final stamping on the final images. Having that extra practice one not only helped me with getting the layering just right for this image, but it also helped me practice what colors looked best together layered. So this bottom layer I did with soft sand. The second layer here I did with soft brown, and these are all Hero Arts inks. Keep in mind that these inks kind of soften and blend a little bit once they dry, so it won't look as harsh. The color differences won't look as harsh as it dries. So here I'm going to show you how I struggled to get the third color layer. I wanted something medium, but I didn't have a medium brown ink on hand. So I'm taking a dark brown ink. This is Hero Arts Cup of Joe. I first tried stamping it on scrap paper and then stamping the second generation onto the image to get a lighter color, but it just didn't work. So here's what I found worked. And since I have this practice image, I could do this. I found that I, if I inked it up with the dark cup of joe, dabbed some of it away with a dry cloth, then added some of the soft brown lighter color ink on top, then I got a medium color. So here you'll see it again. Inking it up with the dark brown, dabbing some away with a dry cloth, 
then inking it with the lighter brown and then stamping it. So some of that dark ink is still on there. It doesn't really hurt your ink pad. Your ink pad will be fine. You add that light color and then you get a medium color. So if you have stamp layering images but not a lot of inks, try mixing and layering different colors together. Okay, I'm gonna move along here to save some time. I did do the final layer of details on this with that dark cup of Joe ink. And then I did the antlers with the soft brown ink. Next, you can add little images onto his antlers to decorate them. There are ornaments that you can hang from it, which I think are fun. You could put little holly or berries or leave it as is. I decided to kind of make it a little more playful by adding some uh, lime green uh, little leaves here and there. And then I added little berries with the red royal ink. There are coordinating dies available for all of these little images, but I decided to go ahead and cut this out by hand as one piece. That's, I just enjoy uh, cutting things out like that. I did use a white gel pen to add little uh, details to the deer's eyes and also to the berries. It really makes quite a difference in real life. I'm gonna go ahead and create cards with these two images we created. I have an impressed background that I showed you before with the rectangle dies. And I'm using an I Miss You sentiment from the stamp set you see there on the left. I like to create cards with holiday images but non-holiday greetings. This allows me to have a lot of cards on hand during the winter season, but not all holiday greetings. There's no reason to have to use those holiday greetings. I thought this worked nicely also. So I added my impressed background to a five and a half by four and a quarter craft note card. And I added the deer with some foam adhesive. Here I'm using some Ranger matte multimedium to add little sequins here and there. So you can see how that impressed background allows the card to still have a clean look, but it adds some interest to the background. It really does make a big difference. This is a great way to get more out of your dies, especially those kind of stacking die sets. Okay, so here's the deer all finished up, and then the cardinal card. I added some little stamped images from that same cardinal stamp set and a greeting, which I'll show you in a little bit. I also wanted to share a quick tip about the cardinal card. I told you this was random, sorry, but this is a fun tip. I wanted little berries, so I took my Red Royal ink, and I actually used a stylus to just touch to my ink pad, and then it allows me to add little dots or little berries wherever I want it. So you could use a toothpick for this, anything with a fine point, just touch it to your ink pad, and you can use it to make tiny little dots. And here's another little tip for using your stylus in a creative way. I wanted to have a black eye, that sounds bad, but a black eye on my cardinal with a little white dot in the center. So I'm using black enamel accents from Ranger and I'm gonna allow that to dry. It'll give me some dimension. Once it's dry, I'm going to take the white enamel accents from Ranger, squeeze them onto scrap paper, dip my stylus into it, and then touch it lightly to the eye. And that allows me to get a tiny little white dot on the eye. So there we go. It's another way that you can use your tools creatively. So I really was going to stop here with these two cards, but I got carried away and I wanted to show you the other cards also that I ended up making because I had some tips for these also. So Here Arts has these die sets that are fantastic. They allow you to cut parts of an image so that you can kind of curl them up and get some dimension like you see on the branches of this tree. A lot of people ask how to use these, so I thought I'd show you an example. I'm using some Distress Inks from Tim Holtz to quickly color these. So I have die cut my tree. It has the outline shape and also the little branches that create a 3D look from some white cardstock. I start by putting a light green ink down onto it with an ink blending tool. And the nice thing is, is that the ink kind of uh, picks up on the edges, the die cut edges, so you get a definition very easily by using the ink blending tool. Then I came in with a medium color ink just to add some more to it. And then here's the fun. I'm gonna take my finger to kind of peel up all of those little branches. These dies are designed to just kind of create these three-dimensional looking images. So I'm gonna peel up all of the branches and then I'm going to add some darker green, which is peeled paint distress ink, to the branch tip. So I'm kind of lightly rubbing it across all those areas that are sticking up. And this is how you get nice definition very quickly using these three-dimensional type of dies. Hero Arts has many dies like this. They have a Santa Claus, they have the tree, they have a pine, uh, or a palm tree, uh, they've got a pineapple, they've got everything. I really liked this one in particular and the technique works really well. 
I decided to put this guy on a craft colored tag. So I die cut this outline shape from craft also, and I'm going to put some adhesive, a strong adhesive, just on the outline areas on the back of our green tree. You don't want to glue down those branches because you want those to kind of stick up. But I wanted that brown to kind of show through. I created a tag using the Hero Arts Infinity tag set that you see here. It's a fantastic set. And I did the impressed technique on the background with some circle dies. I'm going to add this to the card with some foam tape and put a Tim Holtz star on top and some Your Next Step enamel dots that have some glitter in it. And I'm going to tuck those underneath the 3D branches so that you get that nice dimensional layered feel. Now, I'm not worried about this getting squished in the mail because I'm going to stick it on a gift. However, if you are concerned about it getting flattening, flattened in an envelope, you can squirt some something like glossy accents under each of those branches and let them dry, and that'll force them to stay dimensional. However, I have mailed this before, and it really did stay quite nice, and you get that dimensional feel. I added a little heart with a greeting from this Hero Art stamp set and kept it quite simple after that. And check out that dimensional feel. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the snowflakes over here. These work the same way. These are also from Hero Arts. You have the outline image and then the three-dimensional image inside. And I'm going to create three of them at once. I just tape them into place so that when I run it through my die cut machine, they do not shift apart. So here you can see the fun dimension that you get with these dies also. I think this is probably my favorite of all of these types of dies from Hero Arts. Now the outline piece I cut from some glitter paper. I'm going to glue that to the back so that you can see that glitter showing through. I created a tag with these snowflakes. You can see I use the same technique in the background. On these, I did put some gems here and there from Hero Arts. I silver heat embossed a sentiment from that same sentiment stamp set. That's a great set. It has a lot of different types of greetings. And then to give it that shimmer, see that shimmer on the white cardstock? I did spray those snowflakes with shimmer mist. This is the shimmer mist I use. I just give it a light mist from far above and it really adds some sparkle and shine to your final project. So there we have another tag ready for the holidays. And again, you can put these through the mail. They should be just fine. Okay, so I did another impressed background card here. This one uses the Hero Arts piece stamp and die set. They come together, which I really like because they fit together nicely, or you can use them separately. I die cut the piece from some white cardstock, and I applied a variety of blue distress inks over it to give it some quick, powerful color. After I've colored it, I'm going to glue this die cut onto a white craft foam piece die cut. The reason I did that is this allows my piece die cut to be popped up. So by die cutting it also from the craft foam, you get that extra dimension behind it. I glued this onto a background where I used the impression technique along with some pool on the dies when I ran, when I ran it through. So you can see those little pool lines in the background. I stamped the sentiments to go around it and added some of the Lucy Abrams sequins around it. And I just think that's a great way to make a pretty simple card have a lot of interest. I did spray that die cut with that shimmer spritz and you can see the sparkle that you get with that. I think this is probably my favorite of the cards because I just love these colors. Okay, now we're on to our last two card examples. For this one, I used the holly kind of images from this. I didn't really color them true to colors, but I had fun coloring them anyways. Here you can see the final results. I used Spectrum Noir colored shimmer markers to color it in very quickly, and I added glossy accents to the berries just for a little added touch. The sentiment, you're my favorite, is gold heat embossed. And that sentiment is actually from kind of like a Father's Day stamp set from Hero Arts. I encourage you to look at stamp sets that you have from different occasions. You'll never know what small little sentiment you'll find in there that will work for a different occasion. Okay, now before we go, I have one more thing I wanted to share. Sorry, I'm kind of crazy here. I wanted to show you how to use the great new backgrounds from Hero Arts to decorate envelopes to go with your cards. I thought this deer background from Hero Arts was perfect to stamp on envelopes. So what I'm doing is I'm turning my stamp upside down, inking it up with a blue color ink, and then I'm going to stamp this only onto the flap of my envelope. This is a Hero Arts envelope. It has that fun decorative edge. I really like that. I'm gonna press the flap down onto the stamp. Put a piece of scrap paper over it so I can really push it around without making a mess. And there we have just the envelope flap stamped to match our card. So this is a great way to really make your cards come together nicely. 
For the deer card, I decided to use that deer background, which is perfect, with some soft brown ink on the white envelope flap. And check it out, it's a perfect match now. But really what makes a big impact is when you heat emboss those flaps. So here I am going to uh, ink up with Versamark ink, stamp one of the other Hero Arts backgrounds, I'll show you, show you it in a moment, onto the envelope flap here. This is a smaller envelope because I made those holly cards to be four bar size. So this is a four bar envelope. Adding some Hero Arts gold embossing powder and heat setting that and check out the wonderful shine and texture that you get on the flap that really makes that simple card kind of pop. And finally, for the cardinal card, I use that same background stamp to gold heat emboss on a craft envelope, and I really love the results of that. So I encourage you to look at background stamps for decorating your envelopes. I really like these two new ones from Hero Arts in particular. Okay, so there are tons of information in one video. I kind of went overboard and I apologize for that. If you're interested in the supplies, they're linked in my YouTube description below. But I encourage you to go to my blog at jennifermcguireinc.com to see much more, including a giveaway and lots of card pictures. In the middle are two other videos that might be of interest. The first one uses heat embossing for stamp layering. And the second one uses a stamp and die set similar to the piece one that we use today. Thanks for watching and sticking with me in this long video. I hope you have a great day.